On this week's episode of What's Up Weekly, we sit down with the African Women's Leadership Organization to discuss all things philanthropy. And What's Up Weekly reporter Brooklyn Lambright takes us to Barktoberfest, a 5K race with, you guessed it, dogs. What's Up Weekly starts now. Hello and welcome to What's Up Weekly. I'm Kelly Lichter. And I'm Lucy Kellison. We have a very special four-legged guest in studio with us. What's Up Weekly reporter Brooklyn Lambright brought her dog Hazel in to tell us all about the cutest race in Bloomington. Brooklyn? Guys, this past weekend, my dog Hazel and I participated in Run for the Animals, a 5K that raises money for local animal shelters. Check it out. You might be asking, who let all these dogs out? This weekend, dog owners and their canines came together to raise money for the Monroe County Humane Association. The first event, Run for the Animals, is a timed walk-slash-run 5K. My dog Hazel and I decided to check the event out for ourselves. Hazel and I are here at the start line for Barktoberfest. Are you ready, Hazel? I think we're ready. <laughs> During the race, Hazel made lots of dog friends. We talked with one runner and his dog, Maple. Here's what they like about Barktoberfest. I like that it's accessible for a, a wide array of uh, dogs and people. And I think I like all the activities of the, the peanut butter looking contest. I'm definitely looking forward to it. The 5K course, located at Karst Family Park, weaved through a disc golf course, soccer fields, and a scenic forest. There were lots of smells for Hazel to enjoy. About halfway through the 5K, some people are running, others are walking, some people have dogs and others don't. This race really is made for everyone. And just like that, Hazel and I completed our first 5K. After the race, runners and their dogs enjoyed events such as a peanut butter licking contest, a costume contest, and a raffle. 27 local vendors were also set up for racers to enjoy. Last year, nearly $12,000 were raised for the Monroe County Humane Association. The proceeds help Monroe County's animal shelters continue to provide support for local animals. Run for the Animals is our primary fundraiser. Um, we are a 501c3 nonprofit, so all of our programs and services are funded by donations, by grants. We don't receive any tax dollars, so holding events like this allows us to continue our work in the community. Running a race isn't rough when you've got a dog by your side. For IUS TV News, take it away, Maple. Speak. <laughs> <laughs> Hazel, did you enjoy the race? I'll take that as a yes. For more information on the Monroe County Humane Association, visit their website, MonroeCountyHumane.org. Back to you, Lucy and Kelly. Thanks, Brooklyn. Lucy, I think we should have a dog in studio every week. This has been so great. Oh my gosh, it's been amazing. If Hazel was here every week, I would not complain about it at all. 100% <laughs> agree. Now we're going to move from barks to bricks. Lots of people played with Legos as kids, but one IU student has taken that interest to the next level, bringing the campus together brick by brick. Clover Childers transferred to IU last year and discovered that there are Legos that anyone can use at the Herman B. Wells Library. Inspired by his passion for collecting Legos, Childers decided to bring campus builders together. More than 300 students are involved in the Lego Club's group meet today, which stems from the excitement and the support Childers received. Many more people have joined than I thought when I first started this, because I started this as just kind of very casually. Um, so I'm happy to see that people are excited about the idea. And the club is for anything Lego. They'll be hosting a Lego Batman night and are planning a building competition. For more information, please visit the Lego club on Instagram at lego underscore club underscore at underscore IU. IU's ballet program will glissade into the fall season with its first recital of the year, the Fall Ballet. This performance will be hosted at the Musical Arts Center on October 6th and 7th. IU freshman Arnon Gaffey Kane will be dancing in his first recital since starting college. He's dancing in Heartscapers by Justin Peck, which he said is, is exciting because Peck is one of his favorite choreographers. This ballet was actually set on a ballet company, Miami City Ballet. So it's really cool that we're getting to do it now because you can definitely feel the themes of Miami within the choreography. 
There will be two night performances and a matinee. Students can pay $10 for admission, but for non-students, tickets are available starting at $15. Still to come on What's Up Weekly, we'll get you caught up on this week's trending topics. Beyonce is taking her tour to the big screen. And Mariah Carey announces her 2023 Christmas tour. All that coming up and more. This week on Who's Your News Source, we bring you the top stories from Bloomington and around the state. A Rogers Elementary School student died from an illness last week. With bacterial meningitis ruled out, an investigation is underway. We'll bring you to the latest. Plus, a string of burglaries have been reported at Eigenman Hall. We'll tell you what police say to do to prevent future thefts. And a fireball lights up the sky in Bloomington and it's all caught on camera. You can find all that and more at IUSTV News on Instagram or on IUSTV's YouTube. Tune in each week for more Hoosier News coverage. Welcome back to Trending Topics. Now, Lucy, are you excited for Christmas? I am always excited for Christmas. Well, the Queen of Christmas, Mariah Carey, sure is as well. She posted to X, um, like, you know, the other day. Yes, the actual defrosting has begun, announcing the Merry Christmas One and All Tour, which runs November 15th through December 17th, touches cities like LA, Chicago, New York, and hopefully she'll be singing a lot of her Christmas hits along with some new ones. And you know, starting around mid-October is when people start listening to All I Want for Christmas is You, it starts climbing the charts. So I think this is perfect for her, you know, again, as the queen of Christmas. Uh -huh. And speaking of the Queen of Christmas, another one of our musical queens, the Queen Bee Beyonce, just announced that she's going to be releasing a documentary, kind of like a movie to be showed in AMC theaters coming out December 1st. It's going to be based on her tour, The Renaissance, which Taylor Swift also, am I wrong? Did she just announce that she's going to do one about the Ares tour? Yeah, they filmed it when she was having her residency mm -hmm. in L.A. So when they show Beyonce's, there's going to be probably, I'm guessing, a feature on Blue Ivy since she started to take the stage with mm -hmm. Beyonce. Her dancing moves are so cool. Uh -huh. I could never do what she's doing, and I'm like, what, like a decade older than her? Uh -huh. So impressive. Absolutely incredible. I could never dance like Beyonce or Blue Ivy, but I cannot wait to watch the movies. <laughs> and in studio, we have What's Up Cor Weekly correspondent Carson Johnson in studio to give us the latest on Hoosiers in the News. Carson? Thanks, Lucy and Callie. Hollywood heartthrob and Top Gun Maverick star Miles Teller has been seen on vacation in Italy with none other than Ozark star and IU alum Julia Garner. The two icons are kicking it back with their spouses in Portofino for a star-studded couple's getaway. Garner took to Instagram on Saturday to share photos of the four having some fun on a boat in the Italian sun. The next day they were seen getting lunch and doing some shopping before attending a masquerade. The two married couples are seen together often, the last time being back in May when they attended Taylor Swift's Eras Tour together. Speaking of Taylor Swift, I'm sure you all know the rumors of Tay-Tay's budding relationship with football star Travis Kelsey. Swift was seen at the Chiefs game just last week cheering Kelsey on alongside his mother. Just on Sunday, Swift attended the Chiefs-Jets game with Blake Lively, Ryan Reynolds, and Sophie Turner. While most people are shipping Tavis, everyone's favorite Shark Tank shark and IU alum has other things to say. When billionaire and Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban was asked about the rumors of the budding romance between the pop star and the tight end, he encouraged Swift to break up with Kelsey. The 1981 graduate of the Kelly School of Business followed up by saying, quote, Taylor, I got a lot of good looking single guys that play for the Dallas Mavericks. I got you, end quote. I guess Cuban just wants Swift to bring the same amount of attention to one of his players as she is to Kelsey. And that's all I have for Hoosiers in the News this week. Lucy and Callie, back to you. When we come back, we sit down with the African Women's Leadership Organization. And I'll take you to the Bloomington Farmer's Market to try nearly 20 different apples. Stay with us. We're back now with Abigail and Christabel. Ladies, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Yeah. So just start off, you know, kind of easiest question. What is ALO and kind of a little bit about what you guys do? Yeah, um, so ALO stands for African Women Leadership Organization. And we honestly do a very wide range of things. It would be kind of hard to just find one sentence that sums that up. But we do anything from philanthropy-based events to mental health uh, focused events. Um, but our main goal is to engage and empower women um, any way they need fit, any way they seem necessary. So. 
Wow. So how'd the organization get started here at IO? Yeah, so um, it got started in 2020 during COVID times, and our founder, which is Rochelle, decided to create an organization because she thought there was like a really a disconnect between African women on campus, and she just wanted to create like an organization that would be there to support and you know empower them. So yeah, that's so cool. And like, how did you guys get involved with this organization? Like, how how did you find it? For me, it was just going to one singular event. I'm pretty sure the event was just painting totes and you were just engaging and interacting with other African women and it felt like such a supportive, um, like awesome environment. And so uh, last year I served as co-event coordinator and this year the honor of sorting, serving as co-vice president. So, yeah. yeah, for me, um, I went to an event, also the same event during my freshman year. It was the painted like two events and it was just super fun. As she said, so supportive, like it was so empowering. So then I was like, yeah, I definitely have to join this organization. I think this is the one for me. So after I served last year, I served as the treasurer and I'm still the treasurer this year. So I totally understand like that snowball effect, like going to the one event and now you're like, yeah. oh my God, I'm in leadership <laughs> like a couple <laughs> years later. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you guys said that you do a lot of different events. So what does your community involvement with ALA look like? Um, well, uh, we have one big fundraiser and that's basically what ALA is really about and that's called Project Period. Um, and our main goal with Project Period is to decrease period poverty as a whole, um, not just on a local scale, but on a national scale as well. Um, last year we were able to donate or able to raise over three thousand dollars in monetary and sanitary donations and uh, because of our connections on land in Ghana we ship all of our donations over there and then they distribute that out so that's one way that we're able to you know develop community and also as well like give back um, but another thing we regularly do is service Saturdays mm -hmm. and um, that's about once every two weeks once every three weeks and we just go to, I think we've been to My Sister's Closet, Wheeler Mission, just other places on campus so that we're like showing face and also engaging with the community in Bloomington as well. Oh, that's amazing. So you do like a wide array of events, but like what is the one like moment event that stuck with you from being in this organization? Mm, yeah, I think she already mentioned it, but it's our like um, project period event and it's really like a very big event. And like, I think last year we did it like in May and it was just uh, an event with music, like poetry, Basically, we, we're just celebrating all the donations we're able to like receive and stuff like that. And it was just such an empowering environment to see all this like beautiful women gathered together, just celebrating like the nice things. That it was really nice. Wow. So, Alo as a whole, what impact do you guys hope you'll make on the community? Yeah, um, we're really just hoping to continue what we're doing, continue like reaching out, especially to those freshmen. Um, I think it's really necessary for not just freshmen, but for everyone to have an environment where they can you know, go when they need something or even go to see people that look like them. Um, the power of representation is really important. So I guess like for Alo, our main goal is to be that representation for African women on campus. I know you just touched on the representation that was so beautifully said. Mm -hmm. How have you seen, I guess, your organization grow over the past couple of years? I could take that. So like, I feel like in the, when I joined the first, it was like when we did like small events and stuff like that, we could like you could see the impact we were making, but it was like just a like little bit of people coming out. But now we can see we are actually like impacting more people. Like people will see us and say hi and stuff to us. Like oh, I recognize you from our and stuff like that. So it makes like it just makes me happy to see that we are able to like make such an impact on campus too. So yeah, you can definitely tell within our events as well. Um, when I had first started, it was, or started going to events, it was a bit smaller, and now it is still, like, not a, the hugest organization, but it is a very tight-knit yeah. community, and that's what I really mm -hmm. enjoy. When you do go, you're regularly seeing people in ways that, like, you know, you don't always get to see your friend, you know, walking on campus, but creating those events kind of, like, makes those environments where you do feel supported. Yeah, and really creating that community yeah. is such a great yeah. thing to have. And thank you guys both for being here and everything that you do like on campus and also in the broader Bloomington community. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, you for so having us. And after the break, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but what about 19 apples? We'll be right back. This past weekend, I went out with our field producers, Ashton Hackman and Grace Morocco, to the Bloomington Farmer's Market to try 20 different varieties of apples. Take a look. 
I like to say that I'm the apple queen. I love eating apples. I would have two a day if I could. So I'm gonna rank all these apples one through 19 so you can get the definitive list of what is the best tasting apple in Bloomington slash Monroe County. I'll take two. I am a big sucker for Granny Smith apples. I love the taste. I think I like green apples better than red apples. I don't know. Oh yes, it is another green apple. You guys know my thoughts on green apples. At what point do all these apples start to taste the same? Never. Never. I'm really good at taste, so I, I feel like I could try 100 apples and I'd be able to distinctly tell you which one is different and which one's not. For mine, well, I gotta taste it and then I'll just say Oh wait, there's a I actually may be getting appled out a little. <laughs> so the results are in. I went through on my little plate and it tallied up all of my scores on my score sheet. So I'm here to tell you the definitive best apple I tried today. Now, I do take back what I said earlier. I could not be out appled, but by the last apple, I think there's just so many overwhelming flavors that I'm like, mm, maybe I was out appled today. But here's how everything stacks up. So there was technically four different producers here today. There was Old Lane Orchard, High R Farm, and Graver's Produce, and then Scholars and Bakehouse uh, brought the apple pastry, so that one doesn't really count. So Old Lane Orchard got an average score of 6.2 out of 10. High R Farm got a 5.7 out of 10, but bonus points for the patriotic nature of the Freedom Apple. And then Graber's Produce got the highest score at 8.7. Now my top apples were the Golden Suncrisp coming in at 11 out of 10. I loved that apple. Um, and then the Mutsu apple, which is also known as a Crispin, I think was my second favorite. And then coming in at third place, you can't go wrong with a Granny Smith, but also tied with Candy Crisp. And if you want to know more, go to our Instagram where you can see my definitive rankings of every single apple I tried today. Lucy, I was planning on bringing you some apples, but unfortunately, I did eat them all over the weekend when I got back from the farmer's market. It's okay. It's not like you had 20 different kinds of them or hey. anything to bring in. So Hey, it was only chunks and slivers. So Yeah, I'm not upset about it at all. <laughs> and that's what's up this week. Tune in next week for more local and entertainment news. Be sure to follow us on social media. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at IUSTV News. For What's Up Weekly, I'm Lucy Kellison. And I'm Kylie Lichter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.